So I recently did a video on my channel um, that kind of blew up for me. Um, I don't have that many subscribers or anything, but it was about the stupid contrast paints. Uh, and I thought, either there's a whole bunch of people out there that are like on the hype train, you know, like we're drinking the GW Kool-Aid and they just can't get enough of the anything to do with contrast paints, you know, on YouTube. And that's why it's like everywhere I look. Um, or <laughs> um, maybe there's a lot of like young beginner painters out there, you know, like uh, like the the twelve year old kid that goes out there and goes to their game store and they see a cool looking tabletop game and they want to pick it up and they want to start painting it. They're not that good at painting, so they you know they they want to learn the uh, the painting hacks, the stuff that's gonna speed up the batch painting especially with like a big you know army type game and i think that that's that's so the i think that the contrast paints cost myself i wasn't going to talk about contrast paints um i think that the contrast paints are one they're aimed at like the people who have big armies and the beginners which are like gw's like all right we're not going to get into that yeah, like the, either you have like a big army and you need to table it and you want to paint them all the same. And there's something to be said for that. There's something to be said for having a system where you do one coat of this, and one coat of this, and you know, you're, and then everything's tabled. Um, especially with the big army game, you know, versus like a skirmish game or a, you know, squad based, um, like your, you know, infinities or, um, like, uh, I don't know, like Malifa or, well, but anyways, so I, uh, but I wanted to do a video about underpainting and glazing um, because I feel like, well, that's what the whole idea of the, like the washes and that, you know, like the one coat of primer and that's, that's kind of what that's based on is is underpainting and then glazing on transparent colors which is a really really old painting technique um a little bit of background about me um i went to uh art school and that's one of the things i learned about in art history and it's one of the techniques that i learned in, in art school um but uh how to how to paint that way but it goes back to like the renaissance you know like um or before that you know uh but anyway, so I, 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 I got a game. This game's been sitting in my pile of shame for a little while. Um, it's, uh, this is Load, League of Ancient Defenders. And um, this game comes with 60 minis. 60, and I got it for $60. So that's like a dollar a mini. Um, <clears throat> and uh, they are some gorgeous looking, awesome minis. They're just like, that's why I bought it. But I mean, it's a fun game. It's a MOBA inspired board game where you have like, like League of Legends or um, Defense of the Ancients where you have mobs spawning on both sides, sort of marching towards the middle. Or like Rum and Bones is the, the Simon one. That's a really fun game. Um, and then you have your heroes that fight. So, um, <clears throat> has a lot of gorgeous minis in it and they're, they're they're resin which isn't for everybody but i but i wanted to use them in a um in a dnd campaign i wanted a, a ton of snake men but uh so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna batch paint them and i'm gonna well i've already done it <laughs> they're sitting right here um but the i'm gonna batch paint them using xenothal highlighting and then i'm gonna glaze and then that's gonna be most almost all of the painting and then like a little bit of like dry brushing and edge highlighting things like that um but uh you're gonna see me use a ton of p3 paints and a ton of vallejo because i feel like these are the best paints out there for blazing besides um a secret weapon um like scale 75 I think that those are the I haven't used those, but from what I understand, they're like the really high end European. Like you see, a, um, 
a lot of the uh, European paint lines that are good stuff, like Vallejo and Scale 75, that's how a lot of the European painters paint. Uh, and uh, when they when they do like competition minis or whatever. Um, but P3 is, is made by Privateer Press. Um, it's the people who make War Machine, uh, Hordes. Um, they make like a giant monster game. I just can't remember. Um, but uh, I am, I'm going to introduce you to your new best friend for glazing, glazing medium. So glazing medium thins paint down, but it also has like a, um, a surface surfactant like agent, a um, something that decreases the surface tension of the water, uh, and it or, or the the paint so that the pigments will settle in the cracks. And I also don't have it here, but or yeah, um, inks. I'm gonna be using inks because inks are transparent. So yeah, glazing medium. One, it it helps the pigments run down into the cracks like contrast paint. So you have your highlights and your lowlights and it's just a wash. And, and then it also slows down the drying time. Uh, glaze, uh, glaze medium is your, is your new best friend for glazing uh, versus just watering down your paints. Um, and then ink wash. So I'm gonna be doing, doing a lot of ink washes to get some, some general tone first off. And I'll show you how it really speeds up like batch painting. Got a ton of snake men done uh, quick. So we'll get into load. I'll show you what's in load. And then we'll talk about Zenithal. We'll talk about highlighting and glazing or underpainting and glazing. All right, this is load. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you can see standard fare. Uh, you got your cards, your gear, um, <clears throat> pretty flimsy cardboard, but you know, nice, uh, nice print job. You got your game board, um, <clears throat> sturdy game board, and uh, so yeah, like I was saying, it plays a lot like I don't know, like League of League of Legends, or like so you. You have your, your your heroes on either side, and then you have mobs that spawn, and they all march towards the middle, and then the heroes, you know, wreck all the mobs. Um, <clears throat> but so this is this is a newer company. Um, oh geez, I, I'm drawing a total blank. Um, these are these are resin. These are resin minis. Um, they're one piece. They're solid resin. But check out the sculpts. Like, super, super cool. I don't want to drop anything because I'm worried it'll shatter. But uh, one thing that's really, really nice, sometimes they do this. I have one other board game, uh, Aliens vs. Predator, The Hunt Begins, that also has resin minis. And, uh, and they have, what's really, really nice is it has these cutouts for specific minis with the pictures of the minis in the box. So even though resin is more fragile than uh, like a tough plastic, like an ABS plastic or a flexible plastic, and sometimes there's a little more flashing, These I have not cleaned these guys up at all. This is how these guys looked when I opened the box. I mean like the, the level of detail, the, uh, the sculpts themselves, just absolutely gorgeous and uh, these are all the um, the heroes you got your big uh, big demon guy uh, let's see do I have a space marine yeah I do there's there's a little space marine for scale um, <clears throat> there's an infinity mini and then this is the um, this is one of the uh, She's like Profile 2. This is a larger Infinity Mini. There's like a regular size. So, yeah, I mean like standard, she's like 28 or 32 mil kind of scale. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, 
yeah absolutely gorgeous looking check out this uh, Pegasus kind of hero really really nice looking miniatures like some of the best that I've ever seen I mean the best I've ever seen in a board game really uh, in a fantasy board game and yeah I mean I did buy it for the minis that's that's what I'm gonna use it for mostly but I mean the game is cool it's a fun game it's definitely like an easy game to learn and play like on a board game night you know or if you if you're a gamer you know like a, a, a like a, a video gamer and then you want to pick up some board games sometimes I don't know like I've heard that people that play you know uh, video games sometimes they like games with minis because um, it just gives them gives them something to play with besides like little wooden meeples you know uh, so yeah here's check out all the snake men <laughs> it's a lot got a lot a lot of snake men So, yeah, I mean, if I'm going to table all these guys, so we've got red team, blue team, the, um, the, I, I want to, like, batch paint all of these guys together. And I'm not really sure how long this is going to take me. <laughs> it's, like, it's Friday, and I want to do some painting, and I was hoping to get a video up by, like, Tuesday at the latest. Um, but, uh, we'll see, we'll see how long it takes me to paint all these guys, but I do want to kind of show like some batch painting things that you can do that will really, really speed up the, uh, the process. So anyways, um, I'm going to get these guys primed, uh, and you know, you don't really have to prime one solid piece resin minis like this that much like there are they already want to soak up paint you do have to kind of scrub off some of the mold release um they can have like a film on them from the molding process uh but the resin itself really wants to soak up paint not like um uh plastic or metal uh, but anyways, yeah, we're well, I guess I'm gonna have to scrub some of the mold release off them first, but then we'll get them primed Okay, so I was planning on just uh, priming these guys, but there is You know, um, there's a little bit of cleanup So this is this is a, a characteristic problem with uh, resin minis um, so you can see there's some some seam lines they're really not bad at all. Um, but what can happen sometimes, like you can see there's the seam line here compared to here, sort of. Um, <clears throat> what can happen sometimes with resin minis though is that the, um, the, uh, the mold can slip. And then you'll get these uh, like parts like this where things just don't line up on the same piece. And it's not that hard to fix, but um, I think I might just skip these guys for now and then uh, just table the ones that, um, you know, are, are pretty much ready to go. Because, like, most of these guys, I mean, a couple of them have these have this little bit of slipping on the on their knuckles which kind of stands out a little bit you know just a tiny bit of flashing but for the most part uh they all you know they all look really good and and just a teeny tiny bit of flashing just the tiniest little bit of flashing so anyways yeah i just wanted to show that it's kind of an interesting resin problem considering the amount of detail on these guys and like just you know how does that I don't know how does that happen and that's the only thing that gets messed up okay so all in all um, there were three these three guys have a little bit of a little bit more cleanup than I'm really ready to do right now 
these guys all, you know, ten fingers, ten toes, good to go. Um, the resin is, like, softer than plastic, too. And, uh, I mean, like, I'm looking for seam lines. I'm looking for flashing. I'm not really seeing any, I mean, like, enough to say, okay, here we go. Like, a little bit of cleanup. But, um, resin is, like, uh, it's more brittle, and it's also softer than a hard plastic and so it just comes right off like flashing is really really easy to clean up um yeah let's see just comes right off like butter with a sharp exacto Pretty super happy with these guys though, considering, you know, dollar mini and how gorgeous they are. <clears throat> okay, I went ahead and um primed these guys and um I you know if you if you wanted to do this with a rattle can, I would recommend uh like Citadel makes a good one. Um Chaos Black is really good, but you know like eighteen dollars for for one stupid can of primer like a regular primer i think like if you buy it from the hardware store it's like maybe four dollars max for a can uh i i like um vallejo's primer i'm kind of a vallejo fanboy i love their paints uh, i use an airbrush because like i feel like it's easier to control like i can pick them up and like see if i miss a spot then i could just hit that one little spot you know but I mean, you could totally do this all with a rattle can. Um, it's just that this is how I like to do it. Um, so I'm going to have them all prime black. And now I'm going to do some, some highlights from like uh, from the top. Do like a, a 45 degree angle highlight. Um, sometimes I, t I, t I take this part off of the airbrush when I'm doing priming because the primer can clog in there um because uh it, it basically it sticks to everything including metal so if you're using like an ink you know this gives you more control or like a really thin paint but like primer it's just it keeps it from sticking to the inside so i'm going to use a, a a different primer a light gray surface primer but you could totally use like a, a white or, um, yeah, like a, let's see, any kind of airbrush, you know, uh, paint colors uh, or an ink, like a white ink. Um, <clears throat> but I just, I'm going to use this. <laughs> so another trick that you can do is you can line everybody up in the same direction so that um, they're, uh, they're all facing the same way on something like this. This is just a piece of MDF, like a cutoff that I had. Um, and then you can prime everybody and then turn the panel so that you're getting them all from the same angle, you know? Um, yeah, I'll just show you.
All right, these guys are all primed up and ready to go. Um, it's a little bit hard to see from this angle, but they are all uh, Zenithal primed. Uh, Zenithal meaning just there's light that comes down from the zenith, like straight down overhead, like if the sun was at its highest point in the sky. Uh, so you can kind of see like that they are much darker down here. Um, so I have some uh, just like Vallejo um, game color wash and I wanted to try that but I thought I could also show how to make a nice wash with some India inks um, and I am kind of going for like a bluish green. I want to do like a green on the back and then sort of like a tan uh, like khaki kind of color on the stomach like um, uh, like your generic snake man um, <clears throat> but yeah it's so I'm just curious to see how this uh, game color wash just looks like just by itself just out, straight out of the bottle onto the zenithal priming yeah, I mean, like I thought, that's kind of more of a shade. That's, um, I mean, you know, I could do something like that and then just kind of go in and uh, do some some layers. Um, I think actually what we'll do is make a, um, make a nice wash uh, or make a, a deeper wash um because this is more of like a shape uh and i want something that's a little more opaque Ooh, straight out of the bottom all right have to do a different camera setup all right so first i'm gonna do a green One way that I like to do this, like this is a um, this is a glazing medium for paints, and it will kind of thin that down and make it um, a uh, you know a nice. Jeez, uh, I don't know. I mean, it, what it it makes the the paint kind of the pigments settle into the recesses uh, more. I mean, this is this is an ink, so the. It's going to have different properties in the paint anyways, like it's already going to kind of want to settle more into the recesses um, than a paint would because you're not going to get the opaque kind of coverage from a straight uh, paint, um, if that makes any sense. Inks are like transparent in nature, by nature. <laughs> The pigments are dissolved and they don't, they aren't like opa opaque where you can't really, you know, see through them. They, they're semi-transparent. Um, but uh, one of the ways that I like to do that is uh, I'll use a, uh, an airbrush um, wetting agent. And it, all this does is it, it brings brings down the surface tension so that um, it just helps the, um, the pigments flow kind of over the model better. It reduces the surface tension of the, the, the water so that they will flow, it will flow more into the cracks and settle in the recesses. do a wash over these guys with this stuff.
so I went ahead and went over these guys. Um, this is uh, just the green ink. Um, and then you can see how, so technically this is called a hue. Like the pure green color is just color. And then the when you add dark or light to it, that's the saturation. And that's the principle behind glazing, is that you're just going over light and dark colors to change the saturation. You're not changing the hue, you're not changing the color at all. You're just making it lighter or darker. But uh, but I went into <laughs> I went in and changed the uh, geez, well okay so I went over these guys I wanted to change the sail I, I wanted to make the sail more of like a turquoise color um, and uh, what it did was it kind of bumped up some of the the richness of the green in these guys and I'd like that better so but you can really see you know it does. Um, really define like these guys are great to do this type of stuff with because they have all these cracks and like little scales and stuff for um, color to sink into <clears throat> but uh, yeah so glazing you know itself is a very very old uh, this is where I'm gonna try and put the, uh, the art history uh, part of this that I wanted to talk about um, glazing the technique is as old as like the invention of oil paints.
Okay, so that's like 90% of the way there. I mean, you can see just how much paint job part you can do with just glazes. Um, one thing that I did do, uh, I've got some, well, I did, did it on a lot of these guys. They're not really test pieces. Um, did some dry brushing on them, which just kind of make the scales like pop out. Um, I'm not really a big fan of Citadel paints, like their paint paints, but I do use a lot of their technical paints. These are dry, dry brushing paints. Um, and then like, you know, Nulm Oil is good for doing washes on like weapons and things like that to um, kind of run into the cracks. This is not Nulm Oil though, this is just a, a thin glaze of like a, a metallic paint. Um, but if you do want to, you know, make those um, little weapon details pop out, this guy probably got, he, he probably got the most finished. Um, but, uh, yeah, because I did a little bit of dry brushing on his weapon, I think, maybe. I think I maybe used some of these pow some of these makeup powders. This is a makeup pigment. Um, it's perfect for dry brushing, too. Uh, because like this goes on your skin so it's like it, it'll make your skin look metallic uh, it's not a paint it's just a pigment you know? uh, but I thought I would show just how how I like to dry brush these guys um, that's when these little um, holders come in handy is doing like detailed stuff uh, so let's try some skink glue Skinks, I think, are Seraphon. That's a Seraphon. It, uh, they're like lizard people in the GW universe. And then I'll just I'll brush a little bit off, and then I'll put a little bit on my hand to, so I can see the ridges of my hand. And then I'll brush it on. Oops. I'll brush it on like that. You can see how it like really just defines everything defines all of the um, little like ridges and scales and stuff you know in their face um, but these makeup brushes are great um, so yeah this is yeah this is a makeup brush you know just super soft doesn't pick up a lot of paint really good for dry brushing pretty easy to clean too doesn't hold paint very well Yeah, you can see that. And then they've got like some little teeny tiny crystal things around their bases too. I'll probably paint those individually, but you know, that's that's pretty quick to batch paint a ton of these guys, you know, and um, it's definitely a quick uh, process compared to, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, like the alternatives. Um, <clears throat> anyways, um, yeah, I hope you feel inspired. Uh, Thanks for watching.